Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh my God, teach my heart where and how to seek you, where and how to find you. You are my God, and you are my all, and I have never seen you. You have made me and remade me. You have bestowed on me all the good things I possess, and still I do not know you. I have not yet done that for which I was made. Teach me to seek you. I cannot seek you unless you teach me, or find you unless you show yourself to me. Let me seek you in my desire. Let me desire you in my seeking. Let me find you by loving you. And let me love you when I find you. Amen. Once in a while, I find these little beautiful prayer gems. I hope they'll collect. It's really beautiful. Gotta love those Benedictines. So we were supposed to talk about prayer tonight, and we will. But I wanted to, um, I found, I, I've been wanting to share something from this book for a long time. And um, I found this to be the perfect opportunity. I was going to use it for another reflection somewhere, and um, it didn't work out. So you, we get it here. I don't know if you guys are familiar with um, the poet. And he is actually a mystic too, a Sufi mystic, Kail Gibran. And this book, The Prophet, this is my mother's book. This was always sitting on our entry hallway when I would all since I can't remember. And every day after school, you know, I'd come home and this would be the first book I'd pick up for some reason. And I, I almost memorized parts of it. I just thought it was so beautiful. And I was like, like we're talking fourth grade. <laughs> I, was, I was a strange child, but he, he addressed his topics like on prayer, on religion, on love, on children, on marriage, and just beautifully, beautifully poetically written. And I, he has one on prayer, but I found that the one on religion suited us most. And I want to read this, and then I want us to just kind of talk about what religion is to you. There they are, just in time. Do not apologize. St. Anselm of Canterbury. Oh my God, teach my heart where and how to seek you, where and how to find you. You are my God and you are my all, and I have never seen you. You have made me and remade me. You have bestowed on me all the good things I possess, and still I do not know you. I have not yet done that for which I was made. Teach me to seek you. I cannot seek you unless you teach me or find you unless you show yourself to me. Let me seek you in my desire. Let me desire you in my seeking. And let me find you by loving you. And let me love you when I find you. Amen. We're going to talk about this little reading. I'm going to do a little reading um, from the prophet, Peel Gibran. Have you ever? Okay. It's, um, it, it was, Camille Peel Gibran is a Sufi mystic and uh, a modern mystic. And anyway, this is a little book um, that has made the rounds. You know, a lot of people, it's very beautifully written. It's, um, and it addresses everything from speak to us about clothes and speak to us about love and children, money, greed, teaching, uh, prayer, religion. Um, God, you know, all of these things. And um, it, it's, the, there's a prophet and he comes to this town and all of the town comes out and says, oh, speak to us of this and speak to us of this. And so we're going to read on religion. I modernized the language just a little bit because um, it's just, it was a little, you know, so, but it's mostly all there intact. And an old priest said, Speak to us of religion. And the prophet answered, Have I spoken this day of nothing else? Is not religion all deeds and 
all reflection? Is not, is it not a wonder and a surprise ever springing in the soul, even while the hand fashions the stone or tends the wheel? For who can separate his faith from his actions or his belief from his occupations? Who can spread his hours before him and say, this is for God and this is for myself. This is for my soul and this other is for my body. Your daily life is your temple and your religion. Whenever you enter into it, take with you your all. Take the plow and the forge and the mallet and the lute, the things you have fashioned in necessity or for delight, and take with you all men. For in worship, you cannot fly higher than their hopes, nor humble yourself lower than their despair. And if you would know God, be therefore not a solver of riddles. Rather look about you and you shall see him playing with your children and look into space and you shall see him walking in the cloud, outstretching his arms in the lightning and descending in the rain. You shall see him smiling in flowers, then rising and waving his hands in trees. Uh, I, I, I told uh, Athena and Beth and Fisher that I they, he has one on prayer, but the, the one on religion really more connected me. And I think it does connect with prayer, you know, I, like finding it everywhere and um, the many places that, that we look for it. But um, so let's just put it out there. Like what? Mm, it's, it's hard for me to separate spiritual and religious, but I used to be able to do so very, very well, you know, because they were so different. But now my religiosity, I guess, has entered into my spiritual, my spiritual religiosity part. And so now I, I don't separate them because one feeds the other. But, um, but that has not been a short route or an easy one, reconciling religion with spirit. I wonder if anybody else has thoughts on that. <laughs> oh, so, but what is it? The fruits, you'll know them by their fruits. Yeah. So if if they, I, one of the mystics, and I, I will say, I think it's Julian, but I'm not sure. If it stirs you to love, no, it's Teresa of um, if, if it stirs you to love, like you'll know it by its fruits. So if it is a, a mystical or God experience, it will it will cause you to to want to to share that love with the world. That's what I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And that line trips me up too. It does. Because there's, I think there's a the refrain, of, it's in Psalm 51, and it's the sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. And light, which is God, right? Light gets in, in the broken places, you know, in the places where we, we break. And um, it reminds me, Beth, you've kind of studied East, if you might too, Annette, or whoever studied uh, Eastern um, religion or art, there's, there is a, uh, an art form, I believe it's Japanese, where, where like take a vase, um, and it's more precious when it's, when, they, when it's broken, they glue it together with like gold. And it, so it ends up having these veins in it. And that's what makes the vase worth, worth so much it's 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 its own original unique cracks you know you can make vase after vase after vase after vase but every time you break one it's going to break in a different spot it's never going to be exactly the same i can't believe i just said that because i just popped out of my mouth i don't even know what i really meant by that but um but it is those broken 
places that God enters. And, and, and there is a difference when you think about religion as, as something to do and to, to, as, as a quid pro quo or a trait. It, this, that's a, prayer is part of religion. But I like to think of the prayer part, like as far as the structure of prayers and, and things like that, as almost like gateways into what you're calling contemplation to that, just things that can help us get to that place where you, you're seeing a flower, taking a picture of a flower 80 different ways and, and, you know, and, and that you're experiencing God because you're open to God. Um, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have an experience like that? God often comes to us in our sorrows. Said something one day, and I, it was strange when it came out of my mouth, but I, I, I said it. Sometimes I'm most thankful for the things that I wish had never happened to me. And, um, and I also think that as long as you can use those painful times when you know when you open up to God, or you are open, and God can touch you, and you go through this, whatever it is. And if you can use your experience to help another through a similar experience, I'm not saying that's when it's worth it because you know some tragedy is just so horribly horrible to bear. So I would never put that in in a, in a context of your son, like you know, that's being a good thing to happen to you. But it probably has given you the ability to understand the pain of others. I'm very glad to be here. Very glad to be here. David. Things like that happen to me too. You know, just little, little and big things, you know? But, um, Anyway, Fisher saved my life the other one night, and it was just weird serendipity, you know. But you got to give it to God. You know, the night with the car thing. I mean, that's not, you know, just it was just my car broke down before class, and I, I called Fisher to pick me up and bring me to the church. It's like I got a car. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I ended up with a car. And I mean, it was just kind of made to be. And and I think you just have to be open to those moments. Maybe people, maybe people out of fear, maybe they aren't open to experience the beauty of things or to experience love you know, for and from others, you know, if they don't love themselves, they, they can't, I don't think, or we can't. Um, and I found, um, today I found, um, and this kind of, it's by Thomas Merton on contemplative prayer, because I wanted to address contemplative prayer without saying contemplative prayer, kind of like address mysticism without saying mystic, you know, <laughs> and, um, because I think it does, it, it, the name of something gets a connotation and then people either get afraid to do it or embarrassed they're like, I'm not gonna go and you know, home or anything like that. So this is how Thomas Merton, um, is everybody familiar with Thomas Merton? Um, it, um, this is what he says. And I, I think, and this is where we're headed as we're talking about prayer, but um, um, there are four here, so let me make sure I get the right one. Okay. This one actually says almost exactly what you said. Okay. Contemplative prayer is not so much a way to find God as a way of resting in him whom we have found, who loved us, who is near to us, who comes to us, to draw us to himself. 
um, prayer. Okay. Top one. Prayer does not blind us to the world, but it transforms our vision of the world. I think this is headed towards where I'm saying like prayer is like a pathway to that state of contemplation where you feel they're one with God, you know, just 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 everything is it's it's an altered state, it's like sensing without your physical senses, although you do need your physical senses to to initially like, like if by the, you had to see that flower in order to feel that flower. You had to see that flower with your corporal eye in order to see it with the eye of your heart. Does that make sense? Otherwise, it'd just be a little flower that you walk past or step on accidentally, but you saw its preciousness. You saw God in that flower. He goes on to say, um, um, and makes us see it, all men, and all the history of mankind in the light of God. So prayer does not blind us to the world but it transforms our vision of the world and makes us see it, all men and all the history of mankind in the light of God. To pray in spirit and in truth enables us to enter into contact with that infinite love, that inscrutable freedom, which is at work behind the complexities and the intricacies of human existence. This does not mean fabricating for ourselves pious rationalizations to explain everything that happens. It involves no surreptitious—oh, I can't pronounce that word—surreptitious surreptitious manipulation of the hard truths of life. True contemplation is not a psychological trick, but a theological grace. It can come to us only as a gift and not as a result of our own clever use of spiritual techniques. So there's no trick, you know. God's going to come when God's going to come. And I think God is always there. I don't know. Anybody else have some thoughts on this one? Everything is praying. I just feel like dream, I think dreams pray. I mean, they look like they're praying. You know, their arms all stretched out. I don't know. I, I spent too much isolation in COVID and I was taking these walks. I befriended the trees. I made up this little. see what they are, you know? Um, yeah. I thought about uh, when I was looking at the leaves, you know, like, and so, you know, with COVID, I had a whole, whole season seeing the same trees every day. And so I've noticed, you know, just, I, I didn't name them or anything. I didn't go that far. But um, I kind of thought, wow, these trees, you know, trees have been around for centuries and centuries and centuries, not so much here, I, I find it, I found a lot of ancient, ancient trees in Ireland. It was like, and then in New Orleans, we have like a 750 year old oak or something. But, and I would think about how long they've been there witnessing man, witnessing our prayers, maybe holding our prayers up to God because they're so tall, these giant arms that just, you know, reach up to God. And, and I thought about the leaves as being individual prayers from individuals that they've just been collecting and collecting and spread, or they collected while they were in hibernating in winter, and now they're co they're collecting our prayers, and then they'll sprout their leaves, and then as the leaves shed, our prayers, little prayers are answered. I don't know, maybe I'll write a little children's book. I have no idea, but you know. yeah, it, it, it's, yeah, it's called them prayer catchers for some reason. Maybe I was praying with them, but I, I call them my prayer catchers. So um, that's just a little aside. <laughs> you put out the mystics on prayer and the Catholics on prayer. Okay. Um, 
Uh, we're going to take the mystics on prayer. And what I want to do is um, let's go around. Okay. So I'm not reading everything. And, um, and you can remove your mask when you're talking. You guys feel like spacing out a little bit or heading up to the lectern. That's right with me. And, um, but I'll start. Um, and so like, we'll, um, just by, just by saying, um, oh, it's, oh, darn it. You don't have this one fish. You're going to have to listen. I'm sorry. We love you though. It's um, okay. So we'll just, um, you know, by, by paragraph and, um, or with Teresa of Avila, um, I'll take Teresa of Avila. So let me start with the cloud of unknowing. And I'm going to point to the person who hasn't said anything in this class yet today. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Look, may I say that I can only hear Natalie, so the rest of you, if you speak up, I might be able to hear you. Why don't we, um, i tell you what. But don't, I don't want to mess things up in there for you, but the way the. Move the, your mask while you read, and I will put mine on while y'all are reading. How about that? that yeah, I'd love to hear the rest of you. Amenable? And you tell us if you can hear, okay? And if you can't hear Fisher, then I'll go ahead and take the stage. I don't know I like that or anything. <laughs> it's, it's like, you know. So you guys just have to step up to the to the laptop for your parts. I guess so. It's like, uh, um, here, Fisher, it's like confession. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Can you still hear me? Oh, you sound wonderful. Okay. So... Prayer is an act of love. Words are not needed. God is pleased that we even try. Making the time frequently to be alone with the one we know loves us. It's not to think much, but to love much. And so do that, which best, best stirs you to love. Settle yourself in solitude and you will find God in yourself. What peace can we hope to find elsewhere if we have none within us? Mm. Before prayer, endeavor to realize whose presence it is that you are approaching and with whom you are about to speak, who you are addressing. Sensing God's presence is not in your power, but in his. He will show himself when it suits him to do so, and he can also remain hidden if that is his wish. This is what Christ meant when he said to Nicodemus, the spirit breathes where it will. You hear its voice, but do not know where it comes from or where it is going. Any one devotional practice has things which others lack, but the effectiveness of all the practices come from God alone and in denied and is denied to none of them. For one form or of goodness cannot conflict with another. Therefore, people should remember that if they see or hear of a good person which is following a way which is different from theirs, then they are wrong to think that such a person's efforts are all in vain. If someone else's way is of devotion does not please them, then they are ignorant. Oh, sorry, they are ignoring the goodness in it, as well as the person good intention. This is wrong. 
we should see the true feeling in pe people's devotional practices and not some scorn any particular way that anyone follows. Sorry, it's very difficult for me to read. Okay. That was wonderful. <laughs> now, all I do is get the uh, paper with my face so that I can read it and you can hear me. Okay. Yeah, that's not important. Try glasses. One of those things about getting old. Yeah. Here, I can do mine too. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Here. Um, really? Yeah, a little bit more light would help me too. <laughs> no. Where did you get my flashlight? Is that no, that's okay. <laughs> okay. The eye through which I see God is the same eye through which God sees me. My eye and God's eye are one eye, one seeing, one knowing, one love. The eyes which look are the eyes through which God sees us. To pray is to grace, is to gaze at God and to see Feel God gazing back at you. If the only prayer you ever say is thank you, it will be enough. The Rosary, you don't have to like know how to do a Lectio Divina or anything. You know, you can just say thank you. And there you go. So, Julian of Norwich. My favorite. One of them, anyway. She says, pray. Even if you feel nothing, see nothing. When you are dry, empty, sick, or weak, at such a time is your prayer most pleasing to God, even though you may find little joy in it. This is true of all believing prayer. Pray inwardly, even if you do not enjoy it. It does good, though you feel nothing. Yes, even though you feel nothing. Prayer is the deliberate and persevering action of the soul. It is true and enduring and full of grace. Prayer fastens the soul to God and makes it one with God's will. The fruit and the purpose of prayer is to be one with and like God in all things. For this is our Lord's will, that our prayer and our trust be both alike, large. For if we trust not as much as we pray, we do not fully worship our Lord in prayer. And also, we tarry in pain ourselves. I don't really get that sentence. For if we trust not as much as we pray, we don't trust as much, we have to trust, okay, so we, our trust has to be large. We do not fully worship our Lord in prayer. Okay. And also we tarry ourselves, in pain ourselves. The cause is as I believe that we not, that we know not truly that our Lord is the ground on who our prayer springeth, and also that we know not that it is given us by the grace of God's love, which is large. For if we truly knew this, it would make us to trust, to have as our Lord's gift, all that we desire. Mm -hmm. Wow. Then Teresa Lucio, she gets a little simpler, I like her. <laughs> For me, prayer is a surge of the heart. It is a simple look turned toward heaven. It is a cry of recognition and of love 
embracing both trial and joy. The closer one approaches to God, the simpler one becomes. My favorite, you guys miss, you guys, wait, yes. You all missed the St. Therese of the Seal class. It was my, it was, it was the best, it was really a good one. We might have to do it again. It was a really good one. Oh, it was Mary and Teresa that showed up. You were all like absentees. It's okay, you didn't get your little gifts either, okay? <laughs> um, so I was thinking about classes on like several of these, like we're on that pathways of prayer where it says ways to pray, like liturgy, personal tradition. Like you can see, I had this for our class number six at that one. Really ambitious to cover that in an hour, okay. But um, there's so many ways to pray and all of these ways can be ways to that state of contemplation. And we could probably look down this list and, and add more. I mean, I'm sure. But so I thought to divide it in, you know, the liturgy, which is worship and going to church. Um, our own personal individual, Fisher, I forgot to do the prayer bike, prayer bike, um, bike rides. Some people need solitude. Um, and some people need stillness. And some people need silence. But... Maybe yours is like solitude, because I like the repetition too. I like to dance personally. I, I you know, as I was a figure skater as a child and a, and a dancer, and so to me, I can I can turn on like Cambridge choral classics and dance to like old English hymns, but I can, and that's I know how to dance. But it's just the way that I can express it, you know, my love or feeling to God with my whole body, and it takes me out of that. So I think that's kind of like a prayer ride, mm -hmm. prayer walks, um, little things like lighting a candle. Sometimes when I light a candle, you, you, whenever I have something, it, whether it's a class online or a meeting with my spiritual director or anything like that, I always light a candle and just keep it. So I feel like the movement of the flame alone it just, it feels like the Holy Spirit is present with us when I light a candle. And it keeps my intention on the Holy Spirit. And things like icons and, and religious, you know, you know, you'll you have a little cross around the house or Virgin Mary, such a Virgin Mary. These things are in our, to draw our, our attention back to God, to kind of recollect us. Um, so... Uh, really, we've touched on all of this, and what I wanted to do was close with a liturgical prayer. And I'm, uh, oh, because I'm looking at the stuff that y'all don't have. Fisher, they don't have the second and third pages, so <laughs> they're just doing this. Okay, so these types of prayer, lament, intercession, contrition, confession, thanksgiving, praise, all wonder, these are different types of prayer. And these are pathways. And, you know, so... And then there's the big prayer that we are talking about, that experiential prayer of contemplation, which I think that this is all can lead us to, you know, um, basically we kind of all get it that, that prayer is not just, prayer is not just asking for things, you know, that's pretty much not really what prayer is about. I mean, sometimes it's, God, please help me, you know, we're wrestling with a problem or bringing it in front of God, or we can be praying for another person grieving a loss, crying out in anguish for the sorrow of the world. Sometimes we ask God's forgiveness, and sometimes we thank him for his grace, the wonder of it all, of life, of love, and creation. So how do we pray? The hardest part of praying is starting. We can find a million things to do when it's time to pray. So how do we start? Begin with a set aside time. There aren't many people that pray for hours and hours at a time. A minute, less than a minute is enough. Our minds can wander. Things come into our head. We become distracted. That's normal. It's our nature to be distracted. Nothing is right or wrong, and God doesn't judge. Use a candle, a Bible, the Psalms. The Psalms are great to pray with. I can't believe I didn't put that there. I should put, add that with liturgy, songs, um, and just, we start by asking, so remember, God knows what is on your heart, so if we can't hide anything, we may as well be honest, 
prayer is a relationship. It's about a relationship with God, sitting face to face with our best friend and our creator. We sit face to face because of the magnificent sacrifice, which is ta-da, the incarnation. Everything is the incarnation. Jesus, in all of his glorious innocence and purity, prayed and asked for things. So we are following the example of what Jesus did. He related to his father in prayer. And, um, but since we didn't look at the liturgy, I want to look at, we're going to close on page 109, Book of Common Prayer. And we're going to experience a few of these liturgical forms of prayer. One short prayer. How about that? To close. And I really would like to say that I thank you all for so, so much for coming. I, I, I am just floored that I have, that you guys want to continue this and that you're getting something out of it. it, it I am just honored to Kingdom Come that you are here. Okay. So it, 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 it. It melts my heart, warms my heart that you are all here. It so does. So we're going to do a short order of evening worship, okay? And we can look at our, we'll just look over, first of all, everybody knows what a collect is, right? I love collects. Those are, um, where's my little prayer thing again? Ornit, Dunley, uh, Pathless Prayer. Of course, the Eucharist. Intercession, confession, we do all of this, all of these things, the Eucharist, intercession, confession, colics, gesture, hymns, all of this happens in a Sunday, and they're all forms of prayer, okay? And that's what's so magical about the liturgy, about the Holy Eucharist, right, one or two, it doesn't matter, all of it's gorgeous. Um, all, you know, anyway, no matter what. My mom hates the 1979 Book of Common Prayer. I think it's just grand, but you can actually get the old one too in the new one, so it doesn't matter. But um, so everybody, we're going to turn to um, we're going to do this kind of piecemeal because I'm going to have to find. I had I had to go and find the proper colic. I did this like the right way, okay? So I have little blue stars where I'm supposed to turn the page, and I'll tell you when to turn it to, so we can kind of follow how it it flows. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know how many of you have your own Book of Common Prayer, but um, it's it's beautiful to read the collects, um, the modern and traditional, because um, there's such beautiful forms of prayer. Um, you'll hear three collects in this in this order of worship, um, and, and it's just you can read, you know, the burial rites. You know, we, what we did for your dog, Beth. You know, we did the burial rite right too out of, out of the book. It's such. There's so much in here that's just exquisite, and all the psalms are in here. I highly recommend trying to do the Psalter at least once, as it's a beautiful experience. Anyway, so let's turn down the lights. Don't put it up. Don't put it up. And don't put it up the 10.30 sermon on Christmas Eve. Yeah. Don't you love it in the sunset when they think I'm at night and they turn the lights down and it's all candles? You leave me? Oh, okay. Thank you. You are more than invited. No invitation is necessary. Please come. You're one of us, part of us. Oh, can you give me the little Anselm prayer? But you could take the other one. No, it's next Wednesday. We have all, all of them in January. And I don't know about any, I don't know. Yeah, I guess I won't put on the board if you worship. So, light and peace in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so I can pick one of these three. I'm just gonna. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night, darkness is not dark to you, O Lord. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Let us pray. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by the great, by your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Now I'm going to say the collect for the first Sunday after Christmas, which is the one that we read during Epiphany, and it's on page 161. And mine is marked the ribbon, so I should have known that. So all during Epiphany, they read the, the, the collect for the first Sunday after Christmas Day, which is a beautiful collect, the preface of the Incarnation. Almighty God, who has poured upon us the new light of thine incarnate word, grant that the same light enkindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I go flip back. And we will say, let's say together on page 112, O gracious light. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven. O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Almighty and everlasting God, let our prayer in your sight be as incense, the lifting up of our hands as the evening sacrifice. Give us grace to behold you, present in your word and sacraments, and to recognize you in the lives of those around us. Stir up in us the flame of that love which burned in the heart of your son as he bore his passion, and let it burn in us to eternal life and to the ages of ages. And then at the end, there's a blessing or the grace. If you turn the page, you can say it together, I can say it, it doesn't matter. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. So, but did you see like how there's colics and prayers and there's just, there's all, all of those types of intercession, they're, they're all in here, you know? So the collect is something that collects everybody in church and, and it's like a communal prayer, like a, a asking for God to, to grant a, a community of people uh, grace, you know, blessings. That, uh, and that's where the word collect comes from, to collect us. Um, and then, you know, we say confession, you know, almighty God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. All these are... It happens in the liturgy, all of it. And it's so glorious. If you just stop doing it by rote, you know, really, really look and feel the words. And there is so much mysticism in here. We better not tell the establishment. <laughs> you might have to redo it again. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think my mom will like that one either. Oh, well. But anyway, I guess class is over. And I am... Um, disappointed because actually the one thing that did bring me back to God this week it really has been a strange like God wasn't able to I, I couldn't find God this week and it was really strange and hard and um until I was getting ready to come here tonight and then God was everywhere so thank you just excited to see you guys again okay all right, class dismissed. Thanks be to God.